I wasted years learning how to code and in this video I'm going to share exactly how I would do that twice as fast in 2025 so that you can start making money even quicker so that I could have started making money even quicker. Now if you don't know me my name is Jake I was an ex Amazon engineer and now I'm making these videos to share exactly what did work what didn't work what I'm actively doing to earn over a hundred thousand dollars as a remote front end developer in 2025. Now, if you're new to the channel, I have a website called frontendfuture.com. On that website, there is a free training that shares exactly how you can break into the industry as quick as possible so that you can start making money. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the video. So overview of this video, I want to share exactly what I did, how much time it wasted, what I would do today in 2025. I would say why I would learn this way. And I will also share realistic timelines you can expect if you choose to go down this path. If you're thinking about learning how to code, if you're thinking about changing industries, breaking into this industry, you're going to learn exactly how long you can expect to spend learning how to code before you start earning money or what have you. Okay. So let's talk about what I actually did. When I was learning how to code, I had a long and kind of twisty and weird path. And the reason is because when I first was introduced to coding, I didn't know I wanted to do this full time. Okay. I was introduced to coding in high school where it was kind of just a requirement to graduate or it was an elective. And I, you know, I thought, oh, you know, that's kind of cool. I don't know if I'll do this full time, but, uh, you know, I took the option and that's where I learned basic HTML and CSS. And then after that, in that class, you know, I was pretty decent, right? It, it came somewhat naturally where, you know, I could write some code and it's, you know, I was, I, was, I was pretty proficient at it out of the gates. And after that, there was a period of about, I think a year, year and a half before I actually started coding again. And it was kind of that dead time between high school and college where, you know, I was finishing up high school. I didn't know what I wanted to study in college yet because when I got to college, I wasn't a computer science major from the starts. You know, I didn't know I was undecided engineering. I knew I wanted to do something in the math, you know, kind of science realm, but I didn't know I wanted to be an engineer, uh, software engineer specifically. Right. And so I had that dead time. Once I picked back up, once I knew I was going to study computer science, that's when I got into coding 101. Right. So the first course was basic Python. And in that course, we covered conditionals, we covered loops, we covered, you know, file input outputs, things like that. Some of like the basic fundamentals of coding, um, of scripting. That's what we covered in that class. And I'd say that was a nice foundation. Uh, didn't necessarily need to be taught in Python, but uh, you know, I did learn some Python. It was a decent introduction to coding. After that, I took a class in basic Java. Okay. So that class covered object oriented programming, which that in and of itself is a pretty valuable class. Just thinking about object oriented, like that is a very common and expected paradigm for understanding kind of the fundamentals of coding and production software development, so to speak. So uh, it is valuable, but in hindsight, it wasn't the most valuable thing in the world just to get into the industry, right? I think it's important to learn at some point, but not necessarily uh, the most streamlined path, okay? And then after that, I moved into data structures and algorithms, uh, you know, which in, in many senses was was helpful for interviewing, but, but again, uh, taught in Java and uh, maybe not the most critical thing or important thing to learn from the get-go, okay? After that, I had some higher level courses in which I was doing intermediate Python or maybe even advanced Python, intermediate Scala, advanced Scala. These classes were in AI and ML. And to be quite honest, like if I'm being perfectly honest, I never used these. Um, it was interesting. Sure, I, I learned a few things, um, but I realistically don't use anything from these classes in my day-to-day -day work. Other than what's nice now is, you know, when I hear conversations talking about AI or ML, I understand some of the uh, fundamental concepts, the underlying concepts uh, from which these new breakthroughs happening in the world are coming from. So that's kind of cool. But in terms of strictly just making money, strictly just earning an income, being a you know a developer at this point, those classes, they just didn't do anything for me. All right. And so to talk timelines here, I mean, this was high school. So let's call this, you know, this was a semester. So we'll call that five months. So this is basically two years here. Uh, this is another five months, another five months, another five months. Um, so it's 15 months, 15 plus say 24, that's like 40 months there. That's like five years. And then obviously these are other courses you call it like six years, but you know, in hindsight, this was like all of college and then maybe a year or two of high school. And the reality is the actual learning that matters does not need to take anywhere near five years. So if you're thinking about, you know, getting into this, you're like, oh my gosh, that's way too much. Like that is just overwhelming amount of learning. Like the actual meat and bones of what I learned and, and what's practical uh, in terms of doing the job doesn't take anywhere near five years. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that here in a second. But just to give you some backgrounds, so my first internship, you know, you want to learn what's, what's exactly required for the job. What are you going to actually have to know? My first internship was written in Python. And in this internship was doing basic scripting, right? So that scripting 
in hindsight could have been written in any language, but Python is what I knew at the time, right? So it was around the time of after this course that I had this internship. So that's what I knew and that's what I used to accomplish what I needed to accomplish, okay? So my second internship, this was at a bank and over here was writing almost strictly front-end code. And the point of that internship was basically just to build a vending machine prototype, but it was basically a front-end app, okay? And so I didn't really know this stuff going into it, but I learned on the job. Okay, so, you know, I, I knew some basic HTML, CSS. I could write a little bit. So I knew a, a little bit of JavaScript just from like my own personal projects and such. But this was really the first time I was exposed to React. Okay, and that's what I used in that internship. And then the third internship, Python, this was a backend internship. This is the one that was actually with Amazon here. And, you know, I don't really write that much backend code today. But the reason this was in Python was, was because it was primarily a backend internship where, you know, I set up a full micro service. I, you know, created the API gateway, created the Lambda, set up the Dynamo DB, set up the IAM, set up the KMS, so on and so forth. Like a bunch of Amazon services, hooked them all together so that I could service an internal client better uh, than they were. Okay. So all that code was written in Python. There was nothing uh, web facing. It was all, you know, to serve a customer through the command line. Okay. Which is very different than like most consumer apps where, you know, you need a website, you need a web app that uh, users are going to interact with. Okay. So that's why that was written in Python. And then, you know, since I've been working full time, since I've been in this industry, which now, you know, I think I've been doing this for uh, four years ish full time now, probably coming up on five. I'm not sure. I think four years. It's been all HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React. I've written some Vue. I've written some Nux, things like that. I'm going to omit them because for the past several years, it's been React, right? And that's what dominates now. So by and large, what I've actually spent my time writing as a full time front end developer is these languages right here. Okay. And you could consider React like a, a subset of JavaScript, so to speak, right? JavaScript is the underlying kind of language under React there. Uh, so let's talk about what I would do today in 2025. So you see up here, I have this long winding path of, you know, a lot of dips and turns and unnecessary learning here. Interesting stuff, but uh, in terms of strictly getting paid, not the most necessary learning in the world, right? So what I would do differently today is I would just go straight to the point. Okay, so learning HTML and CSS is going to give you a great foundation. You don't have to master it. You don't even have to be that advanced in it. Just get to like intermediate level, get to you know, you've mastered the basics, maybe intermediate level, and that's that's good enough for you, right? Know how to align items on the page, understand Flexbox, understand elements, things like that. As long as you have like a decent grasp of HTML, CSS, feel free to move to the next because the bulk of what you're doing uh, as a front end, I mean, I'm not going to under undersell HTML and CSS. You definitely need to know how to do those. Um, but a lot of your work as a front end developer is going to be written in JavaScript. Uh, or TypeScript, right? So just a type version of JavaScript. And you need to understand the fundamentals. So I would go and learn the fundamentals here of JavaScript. And that these these in combination with each other are going to give you a very strong foundation to move into any type of front-end role, regardless of framework that they actually use. Okay, so that's what I would start with. Beyond that, I would learn some basic React. I wouldn't spend too much time here, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, and then some basic it. These are skills you're actually going to need on the job, but odds are you won't need to communicate your ability in them prior to getting on the job. You know, you may talk about a project you've built in React or something like that, and that's why I'm going to mention that here. But uh, in reality, in these technical interviews, before you actually get on the job, you don't actually need to know that much. And so that's what I'll say with that. Like JavaScript is probably going to be your highest ROI time spent learning because of a couple things. Like one, you're definitely going to use it on the job. And then two, like you'll probably use it in the interviews, the technical interviews that you'll likely go through uh, when you're trying to break into the industry. Okay. So beyond that, I, I would probably build a couple mini React projects just to get my feet wet, just so that I'm confident when I'm speaking about it. You know, I have something like if I'm brand new and I don't have any experience, I don't have any internships or something like you need something to speak about. Out, right. Most people are, you know, they misunderstand why, uh, in my opinion, they misunderstand why you actually go and build projects, right? And, you know, the, oh, the recruiter is going to go and look at it. Oh, you know, the, the engineer is going to go and look at my personal projects and my portfolio and whatever. But the reality is they look at so many candidates that they just don't have time to. I'm sure your projects are great, but like if they had to look at every single candidate's projects, like they would be looking at hundreds of projects a day, right? They, they just don't have time for that. All right. And so what it actually comes down to is, can you speak confidently about your abilities? Can you speak from experience about what you've built, why it matters, you know, how you accomplish, how you solve certain problems in your work? Okay. And that's much more important than having a hosted portfolio or a hosted, you know, side project somewhere. Okay. In my opinion. So that's exactly what I would learn. Let's talk about why I would learn this way. So as a front-end developer, this should feel very reassuring to you. Um, so I just looked this up on the internet. You go to Google and, and search like, what are most coding jobs written in? Like what language are recruiters hiring for? The number one on here, the number one above all else, 
JavaScript and TypeScript. Okay. So TypeScript, if you know JavaScript, like TypeScript is not too much of a stretch beyond that. Okay. So number one is job opportunities, right? If most jobs are hiring for this, or at least looking for this, right? You know, you're spending your time well, actually investing in that and learning that skill for yourself. Okay. You know, you're investing your time well learning JavaScript, right? And the next point I'll make is like, you're going to have to learn JavaScript at some point anyways. Same thing with HTML, same thing with CSS. Okay. If you're a software engineer, right? You're going to interface with the web at some point in your career. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but you know, at some point you're going to want to write code that's, uh, can be run in a browser. You're going to want to write code that can be client facing. And it's especially important if you ever choose to want to go and build your own SaaS, run your own company, build your own software, right? You're going to need to know these things. And so ultimately you just can't go wrong spending time learning JavaScript, spending time learning TypeScript. Yeah, if it's not your favorite, that's fine. You can you can start to move away, but like you're gonna need to be aware of them. You're going to have to understand some of the fundamentals of them anyways. But uh, on a high level, that is why I would actually choose to learn that way. Okay, and here's kind of the realistic timelines you can expect. Before we talk about that, here is what, you know, I just, I just looked up a quick Google. What is entry-level front-end web developer salary? That's what it's looking like in the States right now. So, so pretty promising, right? You know, if you are in another career, maybe you're only earning four Forty thousand dollars a year, six thousand dollars a year. Like this could quite literally change your life, especially if you can be remote, right? You know, if you have a family to feed, if you just want a little extra money in your life so that you can, you know, afford nice things for yourself, for your wife, for your kids, whatever, uh, whatever that may be for you, right? Uh, this can give you a great lifestyle upgrade. Okay, so let's talk timelines here. So let's go through these raw. And let me add the caveat that it depends. Like if you're going at this full time, you can obviously progress a lot faster than somebody doing this outside of work or another job or school or whatever, right? You know, if you spend one hour a day, it's very different than like spending four hours a day, for example. Okay, so in general, though, these are the rough guidelines for how I would think be thinking about timelines, right? So HTML and CSS basics, spend a few weeks getting the basics down. You should be able to create some elements, move them around the page, center them, style them a little bit, at least understand how to solve some HTML problems. And then I would do the same for JavaScript. Understand for loops, understand conditionals, understand maybe how to call an API, how to use an API, just some basic JavaScript stuff like that. And following that, learn the basics of Git. This really shouldn't take more than 30 minutes of an hour or an hour. Learn how to stage changes, learn how to commit changes, learn how to push, learn how to pull. And that's pretty much all you need to know, at least at a fundamental level. If you don't know what Git is, it's basically version control for professional software teams, right? So when you work in a big team of say five, eight other engineers, you need a way to all be working off the same code base, but not overwrite each other's changes. And Git offers a awesome way for teams to be able to do that seamlessly, right? And so pretty much every professional software team uses Git, Git on some level. Following that, uh, learn some React basics, maybe build a basic React project or two. The point of this isn't so much to build the React skills so that you can show off your projects to others. The point of this is to one, give yourself confidence, and then two, give yourself some things to speak about when a tech recruiter, when an engineer inevitably asks you about what you've done, what you've built, things like that. It's more so, so you have talking points. It's more so that you're confident in what it is you're actually saying. You know, so if somebody asks you like, oh, you know, what have you built or what projects have you worked on? Why, why did you choose those languages? Like you have great answers as to what you've built, why you made certain choices, why you've cho chosen to invest there and so on and so forth, right? So I would just spend a couple of weeks here just so that you can speak confidently about them. And then I would spend the rest of my time applying and interviewing. Okay. So interview prep just basically entail entails going back to your JavaScript, working on your fundamentals, working on your speed, working on your problem solving abilities to solve algorithm type questions and so on and so forth. Right. So that's why, you know, every engineer out there talks about leak code and so on and so forth. That's probably the highest ROI time you're going to spend beyond learning the basics, right? Just mastering interview prep and then, you know, applying a bunch of places, reaching out to a bunch of places. That is where I would invest my time. Okay. So all of this right here, you know, four weeks, four weeks, that's eight, 10, 12. This is about 12 weeks in an hour. Obviously, this is a rough, rough, rough rule of thumb. If you're smart, if you're willing to put in more time, you can move faster. If you, you know, can only pick this up once every few days, obviously it's going to be slower. Okay. And I'm not saying everyone can do this. I'm not saying this is the hardest thing in the world. This is a rough guideline for how I would be thinking about timelines, right? If you were trying to streamline this completely and not waste any time, this is how you might think of timelines here. Okay. So that's it. That's exactly how I would go and 
learn to code twice as fast in 2025. Now, again, if you're wanting to break into this industry as a front-end developer, if you're looking to switch careers, you're not happy, or you want to make more money, go ahead and go to frontendfuture.com. On that website, there is a free training that's going to share exactly step-by-step -step how you can do this for yourself. Now, I've also included that link down below in the description. Feel free to click there as well. If that's you, go ahead and do that now. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.